Mm -hmm. What is new in VVV 5.0 Beta 35? Well, we put it on a website. It's all in the log of changes where you read from top to bottom. And when you've arrived here, you will know everything that went into this release. But then I realized you are super busy people. And I thought, why not put some of it in a video? Not all of it. You may have heard that the biggest change in bit of 35 is the new support for VL. This video is not going to talk about it. I will also not talk about most of the fixes and changes here, but mostly about the new nodes. So let's see. Starting up VVV, you see there is a new design element, if I may say so, in the splash screen. That's hinting at this VL thing we're not going to talk about. I'll show you only one thing quick. If you press Alt A to bring up the new About dialog, you can uh, very quickly click here to get to wherever VVV was started from. This can be convenient. And then if you hit Go Pause, you will see here is a VL directory where all the VL demos are that you can browse through if you have some time. But now back to the About dialog. It should be helpful because it tells you which version of VVV is running at the moment. Does it have the add-on pack installed? Does it have other packs installed? Uh, it shows you which graphic card is running, com ports, and like useful stuff. And we have finally found a place to list uh, all the additional contributors. So I'm closing this with Control W. So now let's see what we got. First thing, the HTML texture was updated. Let's have a look at its help patch. And by the way, did you know if you right click an entry in the node browser, it brings up the help patch directly. So let's have a look at the uh, help patch of the texture here. And you see that uh, the HTML texture is now running on Chrome 54 build. This update was sponsored by Meso. Thank you very much. Next, the renderers, uh, HTML. The other ones, the older ones, have been updated to run on the latest uh, Internet Explorer 11. One thing that's new, you will notice at some point, is when you have any uh, module and you go to uh, the inspector and you, you're using the evaluation uh, feature here. So I have the evaluate pin here now. Uh, if I turn off evaluation, you see that the color of the text changes. This gives you a hint that this module is not being evaluated. And also if you have this open and you disable evaluation, you see that all the nodes inside the module will be disabled. Just to let you know what it means when there are gray uh, texts in nodes. It means they are not evaluating. Here is a quick uh, performance tip. Uh, if you previously often used the select value vector and set it to 2D or 3D respectively, you can now uh, use the select 2D, 3D versions directly and they're much faster if you use them. So just to let you know. Here are uh, three little new string notes that I think are quite interesting. It's, the first one is distinct. As you see here in the help page, if you have a list of strings, you can say, please give me only those uh, that are distinct, that are different. And this works case sensitive or not. Then there is an intersect string. The intersect string node gives you on its output a spread of strings that are part in both input spreads. And the last one in the series is the except. And this one gives you on its output a spread that is the same as the input spread except the elements from 
the second input spread. And here we have a new uh, convenience animation node, the Wanderer in 2D and 3D. It does one thing that you often need. It's, a, it's a, like simulate a random walk of particles. And here you have it all done already. You can easily change the parameters here. And all, of course, uh, fully spreadable. And you can get quite diverse animations out of this. Then here is one I like a lot, the arc length. This has been there as a contribution already before, but now it's built in. Uh, it takes a, a list of points and it treats them as if there was a line between them. And then you give it a position on curve between zero and one and you can kind of drive through the points and it will tell you which segment it is on and uh, where on the on the line you are so this is very nice to get uh, smooth camera movements for example if you have some control points then we have a couple of new spread nodes They've all been implemented in VL. Do you see if I type V space, uh, they will only show up. Let's uh, have a look at the star spread. So it's like really like the, the linear spread, but it gives you in a, in a star form and you can easily parameterize it again. Rectangle spread. Um, yeah, it's just a subdivision a rectangle. The other was a spiral spread, as you can see, builds a spiral. And the last one was the hex grid spread. Gives you the points where you can put hexagons right. to have them aligned. Uh, neatly. And finally we have a new circle spread. So that's actually exactly like the circular spread, but it has its outputs uh, as a vector. Okay, now we get to the more interesting things. We have a super simple convenient point 2D module. Let's see its help patch. Um, it's just really drawing points in 2D space, which you need to do often. Um, and you can easily parameterize them. You can rotate them. You can give them uh, arbitrary size, change the inner radius and make them triangles or circles. And this one comes in a second version. Uh, it's called projection space. That means that is independence of the camera and of course it's a it's also coming in a 3d version where it will always be billboard uh, points and then there is the point id node which is uh, works uh, nicely in combination with the point node in that it uh, gives you just draws you ids to each point Okay, then uh, Spout is now available directly here. You have a Spout sender and a receiver. Those are the interesting ones. Uh, if you open both help patches and then say force the receiver to reinitialize, you see them uh, sender sending its texture to the receiver. And this works cross uh, processes. So if you have multiple VVV instances or even other software running that receives or sends Spout, you can now uh, communicate with them like that. And here you enter the, the name of the Spout share and that should be it. Then the GIF recorder. Let me go back to the Wanderer example just to have some something moving here on screen. And then if I want to save that as an animated GIF, all I have to do is to place the recorder here. Just really place it here. Maybe 
I like to have the auto open enabled because that will then open the GIF immediately when it's finished. So I just select the window, press Control 4. You see it starts a recording. Then I stop the recording. It is now writing the file. And when it's finished writing, it's open me. And I can uh, see where it goes. And by default, it saves them on a desktop. So that's a super quick way to save your animations. What else? Tuyo has always been there as a as an add-on, and it is now coming with VVV directly, a fresh implementation. You have uh, the blob, the cursor, and the object. You can join them, send them via network, and then split them again. In order to send the joint uh, Tuyo messages, you use the Tuyo bundler. As you can see in the help patch, Tuyo bundler takes cursors, objects, and blobs, bundles them together in one to your message, and then sends them via UDP. The ArcNet nodes have always been there. Those two have always been there. But now we have two new modules that do essentially the same thing. I'm opening both help patches here now. Um, but they are fully spreadable, so you can spread the net, subnet, and universes. And you can set uh, the ports for senders and receivers directly here. So they should be more convenient. There is a new node for the eye tracker, uh, the eye tribe, in case you have that device. And uh, the leap nodes have been completely reworked. And they are you can access now uh, like all the details of that the SDK uh, gives you. Then we have completely uh, built from scratch the Firmata nodes. It's called the Firmata board now. It is now super easy to talk to an Arduino. You don't have to configure anything. The only thing you do is you connect a digital write or analog write or servo write to the via the cons or directly to the Fermata board. Um, they are spreadable, of course, and and that is it. Uh, you can immediately send stuff, and if you want to receive uh, something, you just put the digital read, analog read uh, nodes here, and you can directly access the pins. So greatly improved uh, usability of those nodes. And finally, the new editors. We have always had ed editors, like a point editor, and, but uh, the new ones are really nice to use. I'll just show you from scratch how it easy it is to use a PCA editor. You type PCA editor. It's available for 2D and 3D. I'm showing the 2D version. You take that one and then you combine it with a PCA editor uh, view. Get that out here. Oops, did you see how quickly I created a group node? Well, that's just a middle click on the output layer here. And then if you middle click on the output of the group, you get a renderer. And now you can also use a cursor, which is convenient. Okay, and then one more connection that is useful is connect the idle output to the selection input of the cursor. Now you can double click to add points. You can uh, select, move them around, move the handles, change the handles, um, select multiple, move them all around together. You can undo your changes and redo them with Control C, Shift Control C. If you want to add a camera, then be sure to connect it like that. It has a camera state output that goes to the editor and it has a view output that goes to the renderer. Now you can uh, move around, pan around, so you can zoom in, out, um, and just like very convenient handling of the Bezier curve. Now, if you remember from before, the arc length node also comes in a Bezier spline version, which I can 
uh, connect here and then I can give it a position again here between 0 and 1 and the output I get is a point moving on that curve. So if I connect that here we should see the point but I forgot to give it the resolution so I need to set a sampling resolution here and now you see that I have a, a point moving super smoothly along this curve and of course this is something we could spread if we wanted. If you want to know everything about how to work with a PCA editor, open its help patch and it will explain everything. One other thing you can easily do is just uh, save and load whatever curve you've created. Let me find the clear. So I will first save this. I can now clear it and then when I load it, I get back the, the curve. All right, that was it uh, for a quick overview. That was most of the things uh, listed under news notes here. So please help yourself to the rest of the change log. If you have any problems, you know where to find us on the forums. That's it. Gute Nacht.